Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guide. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, high-class growers, we got two phenomenal guests on the Aquaponics Guide Show. One who's been a super loyal, super loyal subscriber and viewer, and another that's been a super, super loyal subscriber and OG member. They've both submitted some questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them uh, in the front of the queue so we can get this going right now. So let's get into what we got going on today. But before I jump into that, I wanna thank all the rest of you guys out there for liking the video, watching the video, and subscribing to the channel. You guys are absolutely appreciated out there from Aquaponics Paradise. Now let's get into it, what we're about to yap about today. The first question comes from my girl, Misty Merritt. You've been asking a lot of questions. I finally got a chance to get to one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you in here. You've been super loyal. I appreciate you to the highest degree. You've been supporting the channel and I'm super pumped for that. So I'm pumped right now to answer your question and to get you in here. So, and also you're in Aquaponics Paradise too. You jumped in there. You just supporting, all right? Misty Merritt, let's get to it right now. It says, do you grow any crops that produce seeds? Can these types of seeds be purchased? If so, can you share a link to any manufacturer that sells these type of seeds? Now, Misty, the answer to your question is, all of the crops that I grow produce seeds right producing seed that is just a normal process in the life cycle of a plant they go through their uh growth cycle then afterwards once they're finished then they'll go on to producing seed for survival and to continue their uh genetics right to the next generation so what i think that you're asking is do i produce a certain type of seed Right? Do I have crops that produce a certain type of seed? And what I think you're referring to are heirloom variety crops. And heirloom crops, what these are, are crops that have been grown over a number of generations, right? And they haven't been hybridized or genetically modified. And what they do is, when you grow those type of crops, when you produce those seeds, what you can do is you can expect the same quality and consistency throughout the generation. Right. So when you grow a tomato crop, once it goes to seed, you can take those seeds and you know that you're ensured that that same tomato plant is going to be grown over and over again. Right. It hasn't been um, compromised opposed to a hybridized seed or a genetically modified seed. When you grow those crops, while the crop may be phenomenal when you produce it, once that crop grows the seed, when you try to grow those crops again, it won't produce the same quality and consistency as the parent plant, right? So these are some of the differences. The, uh, the heirloom crop is gonna have a better taste, but it's not gonna be as uniform when you grow it. So you might have some big tomatoes, you might have a smaller batch of tomatoes on there. Like it, it, it varies, right? And, but the taste is great, phenomenal opposed to when you grow a hybridized crop or if you get something from the store, those are really bred for, you know, a consistency in the color, the size, you know, they're bred to be able to be, you know, very disease resistant, a lot of them. Um, they're bred to be able to be shipped for long distances and to have a long shelf life. But the, uh, the taste is often compromised when you add those other you know, when you uh, breed for those other qualities. So I think you're referring to an heirloom crop. Now these have traditionally been grown, you know, prior to World War II, uh, pre-industrialization of uh, the, agriculture, um, um, the agriculture field. That's when it was primarily grown, where we had a variety of crops, variety of uh, people producing it, and you would see an abundance of different types of of crops opposed to now where you're just a few that are grown and produced for the masses right so when we got the into the industrialization period 
that's when a lot of it began to be centered towards the hybridization and the, um, the genetic modification of a lot of crops to make it more suitable for the way we live now, right? So if you're looking to get some of those seeds, which I think you might be looking for, the best way to get those is to find, you know, a local farmer that has been producing that whatever variety you're looking for over a certain amount of time. These are generational farmers. It's been passed down for 50, 100 years, right? And the farms have been passed down and they just keep that variety. And some of these guys have a lot of pride in that variety that they have. They'll tell you, you know, this has never been, you know, um, uh, hybridized or it hasn't been messed with. It's the same exact tomato or cucumber, you know, that has been grown, you know, since my great great grandfather has been growing it. That would be ideal. Now, you may not be able to find that if you live in the city, it may be a, a more problematic. So the next best option um, to find heirloom tomato or heirloom seeds is to go online and you can get them from Johnny Seeds. They have a, a selection of heirloom tomatoes, although they primarily focus on commercial production, which heirloom t uh, varieties really don't fit into on a mass scale, I should say. They don't really fit into that for the reasons that we already named, but they have a variety of heirloom tomato or heirloom seeds there. Excuse me. You can go to a, a, um, a website called burpee.com and they have a nice size selection of those heirloom seeds, right? With different varieties, different crops, and you can find some there. Also, there's another company or another website called heirloomseeds.com uh, and they also have a variety of them there. So you can go on there and check those out. If that's what you're looking for, other than that, all of the crops will produce seed, but I believe that you're referring to that consistency and that quality time and time again, where you don't have to worry about purchasing, uh, purchasing seeds again. The ones that I uh, buy, if they're hybridized, most likely you're going to have to purchase seeds again if you want that same quality over and over. All right, Misty, let's go to the next one. And this is a second question that you asked, so I'm going to go ahead and answer this one as well. It says, hello, Brooklyn. My question is related to the storage of waste removed from the system. I want to also grow other crops that cannot be grown in aquaponic systems like potatoes, onions, garlic, carrots, etc. Now, I've mentioned this before that these type of root crops should not be grown in aquaponics, but they can be grown. I want to get that understood and clear. They can be grown, but the quality of them is not going to be up to par and it's not really going to be economically justifiable. The, the size system that you need to produce what you're going to get when you try to produce these root crops, you know, it's not going to make sense to most people. Some crops are just better suited to be grown in other methods. And these crops are particularly more suitable for growing, being grown in soil. And that's just the way it is. You know, I can't lie about it. You know, I love my aquaponics, but I got to give it up to, you know, whenever there's a, a better option. I can't leave people just lead you on to thinking that you're going to grow carrots and potatoes in aquaponics. Although you can, it's just not going to, it's going to, it's not going to be, it's not going to make much sense. Right? So let's continue. Is it necessary to add the stored waste back into the aquaponics system after mineralization has occurred? Or can I use it elsewhere? like on my in-ground crops as well as few fruit trees I want to plant instead of purchasing extra fertilizer. So we know that during the mineralization process, we're taking out our solid waste from the system and we're placing it in a, a separate tank where it's being aerated. And when it's aerated, you have heterotrophic bacteria that are going to come in there and they're going to start breaking down that organic waste. And when they break down that organic waste, they release inorganic nutrients. Those inorganic nutrients can then be readily used by the plants. So when they're broken down, you have the option to add those nutrients back into your aquaponic system to supplement your nutrients, or you could use those as a supplement to your traditional um, soil garden that you have out there, whether you're growing trees or fruit, tra fruit trees, whether you're growing, you know, any type of other crops that you want to produce, like the onions, the garlic, any of that, you know, root crops that you might be growing, they will be a great supplement 
for those type of crops. So it really just depends on how you want to use it. Either or, it just depends on how you, what you want to do with it. I plan on growing some fruit trees sometime in the near future, and I definitely will be taking a portion of my mineralized waste and supplementing those, uh, the growth of those trees with those nutrients. So it just depends on how you want to get down, Misty. All right. Thank you again, Misty, for your questions and for your support. I appreciate you out there. Let's move on now to the OG subscriber and viewer, my man, Mike Frederick. What's going on, man? I want to thank you for being a longtime viewer and subscriber. You've been definitely putting in a lot for the, uh, the, um, the accomplishments of this channel, and you've been very supportive. So I want to thank you for that. So let's get into what you're over here yapping about, Mr. Mike. Says another good one. I have to admit something today talking about the pH levels and alkalinity between the raft and the NFT. Not sure if I actually caught the vid where you cut the NFT in and was looking for it in your channel. I believe that I've seen every single one of your videos. Went all the way back to when you went to AST and didn't see it anywhere. My question with regard to, the, to that is, are you running two separate systems to keep the levels different? Yes, I am, Mr. Mike, OG Mike. The RAV system here is separate. The NFT system here is separate. They're two separate systems, but I just have them in the same hoop house, right? They're on their own pump, own filtration, right? They're running their own, they're doing their own thing, right? So those are not, that's not a hybrid system, right? For those of you out there that are also pondering, it's not a hybrid system. It says one system for the NFT and one for the raft. I have heard that this is a must from you and others, depending on what you are growing and how. So was looking for the vid that showed the install of the NFT. Now, like I did say that I do mention that at this particular time, it is better to run your systems separately than to do a hybridized system. If you plan on doing serious production, the reason is there's no scientifically verifiable way at the moment no research has been done on hybridized systems right so there's no way to properly size it if you do combine them together it could be for research purposes and someone some of you guys out there who are doing research in aquaponics whether you're doing it on a college level or if you're doing it just on in, in your backyard you can come up with something to help the community out figure out how to do hybridized aquaponics because obviously this is a big big area it's a big problem a lot of people want to do it especially on the hobby level i still wouldn't advise it on the commercial level on the hobby level i can see it but on the commercial level i would say it's still a no-go it would be better to keep them separate but there's also that you know there's obviously a concern or a inquiry about hybridized aquaponics so if you guys are doing research you're doing your phd or whatever this is the area. Figure out the sizing ratios, the feeding rate ratios to the sizing uh, of the system that would be required to run a hybrid system, whether it be NFT and raft combined, media bed and raft, you know, media bed, raft and NFT, you know, whatever it is. Figure it out and bring that to the community, right? This is something that's big. But as of now, it's not something that I can give you a proper sizing on. That's just not the case, right? So I, that's why I advise doing them separately. And anyone who else says, if anyone out there that has rates, you know, like I said, bring them on and share them with the community. As of now, I haven't seen anything on it, right? I've seen nothing on it. So if you do combine them, bind them together, for the most part, it will be mainly winging it, right? So if that's something that you want to do out there, by all means, you can do it, you know, everyone to each his own. But that's just my um, advice on the situation. And as far as the video of me putting it together. I didn't make one, Mike, so you've been looking around, but I didn't make one. Sometimes we just do things in silent and just bring it out whenever, you know, whenever the time is right. So with this system here, we built it and just put it together, but we didn't record it and share it. So that's why you just seen it pop up and didn't know where it came from. So, you know, sometimes that's just the best way to do it. Just keep it to yourself and then share it whenever it comes out later on. So. That's what it is, Mike. I want to thank you again, you and Misty. So I want to thank you again, Mike, for supporting you and Misty. You guys have been great. 
I appreciate you guys out there supporting and showing a lot of love. You definitely didn't go unnoticed. So if any of you guys out there have other questions, be sure to submit them in the comment section below and I'll be uh, sure to put it in the, um, the queue and answer it, you know, whenever it comes up. I want to thank you guys once again for watching the video, liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Every one of you guys out there is appreciated and I thank you guys for your contribution towards the channel. Also, if you need more help on aquaponics, be sure to visit the school of aquaponics.com and get in aquaponics paradise. That's going to teach you the fundamentals of aquaponic growing, break down all the things that you need to do, sizing a system, solid waste, uh, um, uh, biological filtration, all the things that you need when, it, when we're dealing with aquaponics, the fundamentals, right? So it's going to help you out tremendously. So once again, you guys are wonderful out there and I'm pumped. Just pumped to have you guys watching and pumped to share the information with you guys. Until next time, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you, fix my camera, to stop walking and get you a car.